So you can see that the uh, run is just about done. It's 8.75, 8.77 minutes into its nine minute run and we've got what looks like seven peaks separated. We can expand that a little bit. Well, I guess we can't expand that a little bit. Slides in. But it looks like there's two here, kind of almost overlapping. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven peaks. We'll just let that finish. And you can see this is no longer blue, which means it's done with its uh, batch processing. And it's going to start cooling the oven back down to 75 because it went all the way up. The oven's at 217 right now, so it's going to cool that back down. So we're done with the mass spec. We can actually close this batch file. I'm going to go ahead and save it. Why not? And the batch processing is complete. And since it worked, uh, I don't need the GCMS spec anymore. I'm going to close, the, I'm going to minimize the real time analysis, GCMS real time analysis, and go to the GC post run analysis, which is the one with the magnifying glass on it, to do the data processing. So the first thing I want to do is with the select project folder up here, which is the right hand folder. I want to point it to the folder that has my data in it, which is inside the DC Lever 2020 Fall Lab. So that's automatically pointing at my sample. And just by double clicking on it, I can open my data file. You'll notice that there is no integration. The, the, when it's in a batch file, it does not automatically integrate the samples or the peaks. So the first thing we're going to need to do is get it to integrate those peaks. I'm going to move the baseline a little bit so I can actually see the whole peak and I'm going to decrease the vertical sensitivity so I can box up the peaks that I'm interested in so you can see them more clearly. Right? We've got one that comes off here right, at our cursor at about 4.9 minutes and we've got one, two, three, four, five that come off in relatively rapid succession between about 5.49 minutes and about 5.87 minutes, and then the trailing peak that comes off at about six and a half, a little less than six and a half. So probably one of these outliers is the primary and one of these outliers is the tertiary and the others are the secondary. <clears throat> but you can go by boiling point. This first one here should be the one that has the lowest boiling point. This one here should be the one that has the highest boiling point and all the boiling points in between um, come in there. So it makes sense that the secondary compounds probably have boiling points closer to each other than they do to either the tertiary or the primary. So we need this to integrate. We can go to this button here that looks like an integrator. It says peak integration for all ticks. TIC stands for total ion count. That's the number of ions at the charge to mass ratio that you're seeing in the mass spec. Right? So the total ion count is all of these ions. If I double click on this file, right, you can see that there are, there's just a little peak at 132, that's the molecular ion, then 117, that's a loss of 15, that's probably a CH3 group falling off. Then we've got a 97 and a 96 and an 81 and a 55 and a 67. Right? All of those ions together are being added up to give the total ion count. And then this gives you the relative intensity of each individual ion. So I'm going to go to peak integration for all of the total ion counts. The slope of 10,000 per minute, what that means is that it won't detect a peak unless it's rising at a rate of 10,000 ions per minute. Right? That's to prevent it from accidentally picking up like a small baseline blob like this. It never really rises, right? Sometimes when you have a temperature program, the change in temperature changes the slope a little bit. Right, so we don't want to pick up those broad peaks. It's set that unless it's two seconds wide, it won't pick it up. It's got to be at least two seconds wide, or it, you might think it's an electrical noise. And then the minimum area needs to be one million counts. 
We may need to adjust those, but usually those defaults work pretty well. And then here under the program, we can see that we're turning the integrator off at seven minutes. Why are we turning the integrator off at seven minutes? Well, if you look at the full spectrum, you'll see that out here, right? I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back and initialize the zoom. Right, if you look at the full spectrum, we can blow that up. You can see that after seven minutes, there's some other extraneous stuff here. These are probably dichlorinated products. We don't want to integrate those. We only want to integrate the peaks in this monochlorinated region. So I'm going to blow that back up so we're seeing just the peaks we're interested in. And you'll see that it integrated one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's probably two individual compounds under here, which is why that's a little higher, that just aren't separating because the boiling points are too close. So I like that. It worked. I don't need to make any adjustments to the integration. All I need to do is save the data file. I can go to the qualitative table here. And that qualitative table will show me that there are seven peaks being detected. The start and end time for the peaks are given. The retention time is kind of the average, 4.903 minutes, 5.48. You really probably only want two decimal places when you record these in your notebook. So 4 5.90, 5.48, 5.53, 5.60, 5.67, 5.87, 6.45. Those are the retention times. And then the area percent, which is what we care about, is here. Right? It also gives area and height and height percent and area over height. We don't need any of those, and those won't actually be uh, printed in the report form. So what we're going to need is the retention time and the area percent. And then we'll have to use the mass spec to figure out which peak is which. So if I click on this little peak thing, right, it'll take me to the top of the nearest peak. So there was the first peak. right? had a significant peak at 97, some at 96, very small peak at 132. If I blow this up, right, you can see that there's 132. And you can see that there's a peak at 134 as well. That's about a three to one ratio of intensity of 132 to 134. This is the molecule with chlorine 35. This is the molecule with chlorine 37. But it's a very low intensity molecular ion uh, because it's fragmenting so quickly. Then there's 117. As I said, that's either a loss, that's a loss of methyl group. Right? And there's probably a peak at 119 as well. Uh, for loss of methyl from the 134. And then a big peak at 97, big peak at 81, 55. Right. If I go to my second peak, you'll notice 132, 97, 96 again, 81, 55. If I go to my third peak, you'll notice the 97 peak is very small, and it's mostly 96. The fourth peak the same, mostly 96, 81, 55. Fifth peak, mostly 96. The sixth peak, mostly 96. And then this last peak, number seven, there's no 117. This one apparently can't lose methyl. There's really not much at 96 or 97, but there's a big peak at 83. That's the only one that has a peak at 83 rather than 81. All the others, 81. There is one isomer and only one isomer that can have an 83 peak. So you're gonna use that from your lab manual to figure out which compound this one is. And then we're going to go down here and we're going to say, well, this one has a big prominent peak at 97. Most of these other peaks in here have prominent peaks at 96, right? There's one compound that should have a bigger peak at 97 than all the others. That'll be this one. So I'm ready to print these. I'm going to go to my top menu. And I'm going to go to the report format. And then what I want to do is I want to load a new format file. So I'm going to go to the file menu and say, please give me a new format file. Right. And that's the template. It has nothing in it right now. That's the template that will have my sample information, my peak report, my chromatogram. And then on successive pages, it will have the mass spectra of the various peaks. Now I just need to drag my sample in there. Down here are the tabs, right? This is the report format file, the one that looks like a pen. Next to it is the method. Over here is the data. So I'm going to click on the data tab that'll allow, that'll show me my spectrum. I'm going to yank that spectrum in there, right? And so now you're seeing the the spectrum. 
I need to modify this report format file because it's not showing me my first peak. It's, it's showing me the wrong region. So I'm going to right click on this and go to properties. And tell it that instead of seeing from 5.5 to 8 minutes, I actually want to see from 4 to 7. Right? That's when I turned off the integrator at 7 minutes. I'm going to OK that. Right? So now I'm actually seeing the 7 peaks. Here's my list, my table that's showing me my 7 peaks. Right? It's showing me the retention time, the area, the base uh, peak. Someone has modified this. I don't really want to see the uh, area. So I'm going to right click on that. And I'm going to change the properties of that as well. Under format. I don't need to see the area. I just need to see the area percent. So I'm going to turn off that area peak. I don't need the height peak. Right? I'm going to turn that off as well. All I need is the peak number, the retention time, the area percent, and the base peak. So I'm going to uh, change this to column three, or sorry, column four. I'm going to change this one to column three. And I will apply that, and now you see it's just showing me the peak number, the retention time, the area percent, and the base peak. All right, 83 for that, 81 for all the others. I'm going to OK that. I'm going to actually save this format file as a template under relative reactivities so that it will be correct for the next person. So there's my sample information, my peak report, here's my chromatogram, and then you'll notice that this is the mass spec for peak 1, and then there's the mass spec for peak 2 and for peak 3 and for peak 4 and for peak 5 and for peak 6 and for peak 7 so I've got three pages in my report and I just need to print this to a PDF so I'm going to print that Microsoft print to PDF that's what I want I'm going to OK that it's going to ask me where I want to put it and I'm going to put it in my folder under 2020 fall lab and I'm going to call this Relative Reactivities Lab. And, and this would be what you would upload to Blackboard. Or in your case, this will be what you retrieve from Blackboard in order to do your analysis. And then upload again. If I'm done, I'm going to close the report format file. Do I want to save it? Yes, I do. All right, I want to call it Relative Reactivities. I'm going to replace that. I'm going to close my data file. And the last thing I always do is I reset the select project so it's pointing at just JData GCMS right? so that it's ready for whoever comes next to use this. I don't need post run analysis anymore. I'm going to close it. I'm going to go back to real time analysis and set that to the top menu so it's ready for the next user. And because I don't want to waste helium, I'm actually going to set my split ratio down uh, from 150 to 5. And I'm going to set my column flow to 0.5. So that we'll only be running 6 milliliters per minute of helium through uh, instead of 139 milliliters per minute of helium. Uh, that'll save a lot of helium. 0.5 on the column flow and 5 on the split ratio kind of to set it. I don't need the sample anymore. I can take the sample and discard it. So I'm through with the analysis. Close up the room. And all I need to do now is dispose of the chlorides in the waste container. And that's it for this.